Hey, where are we going with it? Look what I found. Do I look like a stormtrooper? This is cool. I've discovered where this is from. This was given to me, or well, left here, in my garage, by my neighbour. And that means two things. It means that my neighbour's a very nice guy. It also means that my neighbour is subscribed to my channel. Because it was out here in less than 30 minutes of me putting the video live. So he's got the notification bell rung too. So that's really cool. I've got fans near me. I've got fans around me. So thank you. I really appreciate it. This is the insulation that I am going to be using. And after a lot of research, it's used in homes, but I haven't seen many van users decide to use this, and I'm not sure why. But I have spoken to the supplier, and he's adamant that this is great for a van because it's natural. It is a wood product. It is just like wood fiber. Uh, it's flexible, so it can be bent slightly. Uh, it's it's sound dampening so it's got good acoustic properties as well as good insulation properties uh, this is the 036 which means that it's 0 0.036 lambda now lambda is the measurement that insulation uh, is measured by i'm not going to go into the explanation of it because greg virgo has given the best explanation that there is about insulation uh, so I'll link his video up in the corner and go and give that a watch uh, as long as you understand what lambda is you don't have to go with with the products that Greg uh, recommends although they are good I decided not to choose the PIR uh, the closed cell foam solutions because I wanted a natural product and this is wood it is totally natural it also is not like the the fiber you know those um, those recycled plastic fibers where it will sag over time you know with the balancing of the van eventually you're going to get some compression inside which you won't know about which means that at the top of each section that you filled you may not be having the insulation that, that, that you require or, or, or that you thought you had. I've got some 40 mil, I've got some 50 mil, I've got some 80 mil and 100 mil. Uh, I'm going to use the 40 mil on the floor and on the ceiling and I'm going to use the 50 mil on the panels where the bed's going to go and then 80 and 100 mil to fill the doors and, and the bottom panels. Why I decided on this mainly was the acoustic value. I have seen a number of blogs and a number of uh, YouTubers saying that they're startled at night because of sounds, especially when they're new to van life. just like to say that this is not a sponsored product at all this is something I've purchased with my own money after finding it online and doing research on it 
hopefully it's good stuff because it cost £280. That £280 or £60 of it was for delivery. If I had just wanted two bales, it would have cost £60 for two bales because it's £30 a bale and then it would have cost me £60 for delivery. That's £120. That doubles the price of the bale. The delivery is a bit of a nightmare and I, and I would just wish that they could do something about that. But, that said, I did pay £60 on Friday and it was delivered first thing Monday morning. Result. Okay, so this is the 40mm. This will be on the floor. And as you can see, it's it's got some bend to it. It's quite light, but you can feel it's dense. Acoustic value, I love it. It can be compressed a little, and apparently if you compress it about 10%, it's still not going to lose much value, lambda value. So this is the wood I'm going to be using. On the This is 34 by 34 mil, and I'm going to be using that on the ridges of the of the floor now let me explain on the van we have corrugated ridges exaggerated you've got some that are the low points and you've got some that are at the high points I am going to be taking the wood and putting it on the high points which means that you've got some low points which need with 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 the Celotex and the Kingspan this would be a void of air as because it's it's so much firmer. So it'll be totally filling up there. So the other thing you could do with Celotex is to put the wood in the lower portion and then cover but then you need wider wood and that's that's weight again. So I'm going on top with the wood and hopefully we'll be less likely to drill into something and then this Stico flex on top there but because of it being 40 mils and this 34 mils hopefully it's going to fill this void at least a little bit if you follow me on Instagram you'll see that I'm posting some updates in real time and one of the questions was how can it be wood and be fire safe now fire safe doesn't mean that it won't catch fire it just means that if it does catch fire it won't contribute to a fire which means it won't burn it will just smolder um, and burn very slowly and reduce the actual fire just to see how fire safe it is It's actually gone out. Again, gone out. I'm pretty happy with that. These are stick pins. They've got a sticky back and they've got a pin on them. Hence the name stick pins. And what they're used for is to hold the insulation in place. You stick them to the roof and you push the insulation on and you've got these little rings that go over the top and push it in.
called thermo fleece and it's just for tucking in these cavities. I'll show you a trick that I learned quite a while back. You've got to put string into the conduit to pull cable through. So you need a piece of string that is the length of the conduit plus a bit more. Then get a piece of a plastic bag and Make a bubble very similar to the size of the conduit. Don't pop it. Take the string and wrap it round the bubble and tie a knot in it, making that bubble super tight. Then cut it so that it looks a bit like a jellyfish. It can fit into the conduit and almost makes a vacuum seal. It should be loose, but it should be able to flow. Then stick the other end into a vacuum cleaner and just make sure that you're forming a seal so that. The only air that can come in. And then do that until it stops. And then you have the string. In the conjure, ready to pull when you want to pull cable through. Is he working at Epson? Yeah. Oh, okay. Until, um, until he goes back to bed. Right. But for now, he's working at Epson. What's that stuff on your roof? The what? What's that stuff on your roof? It's the insulation. I don't want you bumping, bumping your head. You've been to see any more sunsets, mate? No, we haven't. Hello. Oh, you too, Duncan. Yeah. Thanks for the call. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.
So you've just seen me lubricating the latches and catches. This is a tip that was given to me by a couple I follow on YouTube called Camper Vibe and that is this week's shout out. Camper Vibe are a couple, Louise and Emily, and just like any comedy duo, there's a tall one and a short one, and just like any comedy duo, one works harder than the other. And that, to me, makes exciting entertainment because there's always banter going on between them. They are building a fantastic camper, and I started following them because I got interested in the van that they have, which is very similar make and model to mine and I just wanted to see what they did and how they did it. So Emily uh, runs a blog and Louise does photography as far as I know. I'm not sure about Emily but Louise is a fantastic photographer if you go and have a look at her photographs. Go check out their videos, check out Emily's blog and if you don't mind perhaps give them a subscribe. This week I've done the insulation, I've spoke a lot about the insulation this week and I've done the roof at the moment, I've done the battens, I've put some battens on, on the sides of the walls too I'm waiting for some supplies to arrive in the post uh, so I can put in the shore power outlet which I'm going to be doing if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen I asked for some suggestions on which side to put it on and it turns out that the driver's side is the recommended side there is no law to which side it should be on or no rules or regulations for which side it needs to go on it is recommended though that it goes near the front door of the driver's side and this will ensure that when you get into the vehicle to drive away you hopefully will notice a bright yellow or a bright orange or perhaps even a bright blue cable still attached to the van and therefore unplug it before driving off. I'm not going to film me doing the walls as much because I want to get on and get it done and filming does take time and so I just want to plod on and, and get this insulation on the walls done. Next week I hope to do the floor and the vapor barrier. So for me it's been an exciting week. I feel that something was accomplished more than the other weeks and hopefully you feel the same. It's starting to get exciting now. Um, we're at the stage where things are starting to move forward and things are happening in the van. So if you think that's the case, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. And please, if you don't mind, hit the thumbs up button. It does help uh, the YouTube promotional algorithms. and. Um, the more, the more interaction I get, the better for my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Keep well, keep safe and keep watching. Cheers.